Have you ever heard of Undercover Boss? The reality TV show? Okay, so it is uh, a, a show where the, either the CEO or one of the, one of the top bosses of a large company goes undercover, often with a lame disguise, <laughs> and they pose as an entry-level worker. So it's like the CEO goes in and they're, they're being trained for a, a frontline job. And they do that so that they can see what is the customer experience like, what's our training experience like, how can we improve things, and, and all of that. So uh, earlier this year, the CEO of Roundtable Pizza was on the show. I don't know if you caught that show or not, but it, it's so funny. He, he's wearing a ridiculous hairpiece, and he, um, he, they're showing him how to cut pizzas. So the pizzas are coming off the oven. And uh, so the, the trainer said, you, t- you take that. I don't know if you've seen the round pizza blade that they typically use at a pizza place. So you take that, you make a plus sign, then you make an X, and you just cut it into 12 approximately pieces. And it was so funny because this, the CEO has never done this before. It's totally awkward. And the pizzas start coming off faster and faster like an episode of I Love Lucy. And the trainer is sitting there yelling at him and saying, this is what you got to do. Just do it faster. Just do it faster. Just do it faster. You're holding everything up. Oh, no, that pizza was ruined because you didn't get it off the, off the, the oven in time. And the guy is just trying his best to make an X, <laughs> make a plus, and, and he just can't do it fast enough. And it's so stressful. And it, it's always a fun little thing at the end <laughs> when the trainer or whoever it is realizes, oh, that was the CEO I was yelling at. That was my boss uh, that, that I was training. But you know what is amazing? Jesus said, this is going to happen to everyone in heaven. Mm-hmm. You are going to be on an episode of Undercover Boss Ultimate Edition. Wow, and are you getting that feedback back there? You're in that low feedback? Um, so today, I want to talk to you about close encounters. Close encounters, all right? Would you turn your Bibles, if you have a Bible, to Matthew chapter 25, verses 34 to 40. And that's, that's, I, I may not read all of those verses, but uh, that, that's where we're going today, Matthew 25. And so today what I really want to do, just with my last few moments, is to, I, I want to lift the, to your view of the high value that Jesus places on serving. We're in a series of messages called Encounter. And um, we are looking for ways and practices to help us and help you encounter Jesus for yourself. And so one of those ways we're going to look at today is serving. And so the other thing I want to do is just bless you and thank you for serving. That, that's really, that's my goal with this message today. And just to set the stage for this, this passion, portion of Scripture, Matthew 25, Jesus is near the end of his ministry, and he's getting a little bit more serious all the time. And he starts talking about heaven and his return. And in Matthew 25, he talks about Judgment Day, not the Terminator movie, the actual ju- Judgment Day, where Jesus gets everybody together. He, his, he is city, seated on the throne. He will gather the millions of angels all around him, all the heavenly hosts, and then he will gather all the peoples of the earth. I don't know if you are aware, this is coming. Every single person on the planet, past and present, will be there on Judgment Day. And Jesus said the strangest thing. It's not what you would necessarily picture for the ultimate Judgment Day. And he says... I will separate all the peoples like a shepherd separates sheep from goats. And I will say to all the people that I am declaring as sheep, I will put them on my right. And on my left, I'll put all the people I'm declaring as goats on my left. And Jesus will say, Matthew 25, 34, then the king will say to those on his right, to the sheep, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. Now, can you imagine being a sheep in that crowd? Can you imagine the king of all kings, the Lord of all lords, saying to you, come, come and receive the inherit, the inheritance I've prepared for you. I've been preparing a kingdom for you. 
since before the creation of the world. Come and receive it now. Wow, so who are these sheep? Who's getting that inheritance? I want to know. What did they do to deserve this inheritance? The kingdom of God has been prepared for them. Well, verse 35, he goes on and he says, For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. This is Jesus talking. I was naked. I, in other words, I was exposed. I did not have the clothing I needed, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. So these are the sheep he's talking to. And he's saying, I had all these needs, and you fed me. You gave me something to drink. You gave me food. You gave me all those things. These are people who are living righteously. They are seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness in everything they do. So they're serving behind the scenes. They're not striving for applause or awards on award shows or humanitarian uh, ceremonies. When they see someone in need, or when these people, these sheep, when they meet someone in need, when they even hear about someone in need, they step up. They serve, they meet that need, they, 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 uh, they provide what is needed, they satisfy the needs. No one has to ask them, they just find a need and fill it, they see a hurt and heal it. That is, that's how they live. And so Jesus is talking to all these sheep, and then these righteous ones, the sheep, will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry? and feed you, or, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing, Lord, when? We don't remember that. When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And there was a, there was a song back in my day, about 50 years ago, by Keith Green, called The Sheep and the Goats. And I love the way he just brings his humor in and his perspective of how those people would feel. And in, in this song, the sheep will ask, Lord, when? When did we feed you? I don't remember that. What, they, they will say, Lord, when were you a stranger and we invited you in? I mean, we invited lots of people in. And I had to remember a face like that. Ah. <sighs> And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did those things to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. It, Jesus didn't say, it was like you were doing it to me. He said, you were doing it to me, actually. Holy undercover boss. <laughs> right? The CEO is undercover, and we don't recognize that he is here, and the people you're serving are him. I love the way the message, the uh, Bible and Contemporary Language Translation, or paraphrase, says it, this verse. The king will say, I'm telling the solemn truth. Whenever you did one of these things to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me. <laughs> believe me you did it to me jesus will say so when you serve jesus feels it jesus receives it he sees it he knows and he genuinely knows when your heart is just to serve the least just because you love others as yourself when you're not trying for applause or instagram likes because that's a different you got your reward that was your reward. You got it. You're done. We're square. But when you serve others just because you love them, your neighbor as yourself, Jesus takes it personally. When you serve others, Jesus takes it personally. Jesus' values are different than the values of the world. In Mark 9, uh, he was talking to his disciples, and, and they're arguing and everything, and he says, whoever wants to be the first must take last place and be the servant of everyone else. And then he takes a little child, and he hugs the child, and he says, anyone who welcomes, listen to this, don't, don't, let, don't miss this, anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf welcomes me. Well, we've all heard that. And he doesn't stop there. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes not only me, Jesus said, but also my Father 
who sent me. So when you welcome a child, when you serve the most un, uh, 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 unnoticed or ignored person, the person who's in prison, the person who's homesick, when you serve that person, Jesus said, you're serving me and my father, and you just had an encounter with Jesus. Just simply by serving. So when you help your kid with her homework, even though you kind of rather be watching the game, <laughs> or when your spouse is sick and you just keep the soda crackers and ginger ale coming, and you do all the cleaning, cooking, and shopping during that time during of recovery, keeping track of meds, you are encountering Jesus face to face. Here at church, when you're changing diapers in the nursery, or you're taking your turn in the kids' church, when you're coming earlier than the rest of the church to get stuff ready for the service so that they can be ministered to, or I've been paying attention when you're doing some of these things that I have seen just in this past week alone, when you are moving and spreading mounds of mulch around the property, you're serving Jesus. When you're attaching dinosaur bubbles to invitations to church, when you're supporting a sister in the family of God whose father just died and you go to the service, the memorial service, when you're making a homemade dinner and bringing it to the board for board meeting, when you're picking up trash on Sunday morning, when you are missing the service right now to make sure that the people of God are safe and secure, when you're setting up chairs after service, you're serving Jesus himself. It's him. It's not just for him. It's him. You are serving him, and that is an encounter with Jesus. When you help a coworker move on the weekend, when you set out your neighbor's trash cans when they're out of town, when you watch your sister's kids to give her a break, when you take a hurting friend out to lunch, you're encountering Jesus. When you volunteer at CareNet or you volunteer at the Auburn Food Bank, when you hand out church invitations and candy at Auburn's Trunk or Treat, when you serve others, Jesus takes it personally. He takes it. He receives that serving personally. And I think one of the reasons is when you follow Jesus' example of serving, you are walking in his footsteps. So not only are you encountering him, but you are following him. So you're feeling what Jesus felt. You are like uh, when on the, the last night he was betrayed. Uh, the, night, the night when he was betrayed, his last night uh, on earth before the cross, he knelt down. He took off his outer garment, his robe, and he got a towel and he started washing his disciples' feet. And when you begin to serve others, you're feeling what Jesus felt when he knelt down to wash their feet. You are joining with him and experiencing what he, it feels good to serve. It feels fulfilling to serve. And that's what Jesus felt. And that's what you feel. When you're swimming against the tide of fame seekers, you're feeling what Jesus felt. You're enjoying the smile of your heavenly father. 1 Peter 4.10 says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Then do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. 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 So when you serve the least of these, you are encountering Jesus. So I just want to say on his behalf today, well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. Good job. Thank you. Way to go. Yes. Thank you for serving others at home. Thank you for serving others at church. Thank you for serving others in your world, your coworkers, classmates, neighbors. Thank you for serving in the community. Thank you. Good job. We, one of the things we as your pastors are often amazed about when we start to just think through who is part of our congregation and who serves on a regular or seasonal basis. We go, wow, a huge percentage of our church is serving. 
And so I just wanted to come by and say thank you. Good job. If you're not yet serving uh, in the church, maybe you're serving elsewhere, but you, you, you're not yet serving in the church, I want to invite you to be on the team. It's just a very simple, non-pushy, non-pressuring invitation because it's awesome to encounter Jesus through serving at the church, at Hope and Life. How do you get involved? Just go to the website or the app, go to signups, click on serve team. Just click on serve team. So let us know, hey, I want, I want to serve. I want to get involved. And we will hook you up. We will help you to get involved. And so a lot of times uh, I'll have an action step at the end of a message. And I, this one is a very different type. I just want to challenge you that the next time you serve, I want to challenge you to look in that person's eyes and see Jesus looking back at you. Just that. That's my challenge. Next time you serve, look in their eyes and see Jesus and realize that he is smiling at you and he is receiving it from you to him. Would you stand to your feet? I'd love to just pray for you. Would you bow your heads with me online or in the room? Just bow your heads with me. Lord, I want to thank you First of all, Jesus, for serving us. You set the example. One of the last things that you did before going to, to the cross, one of the most memorable things you did is you took off your robe and washed feet. That's what a servant does. But then, of course, Jesus, you went beyond that. You gave your life on the cross to serve all of us and help us all to find salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the high value that you place on serving. I thank you that we are part of a congregation who serves. We, we serve others. That is who we are. That is how we are. We live generously. And so, Lord, I just want to ask you to bless every person who serves at home, at the church, wherever wherever they serve, Lord, I pray your blessing. I pray, Lord, that you would encourage them today. Lord, right now, I pray that you would bless our security team, our tech team, our nursery team, our kids' church team. Those people right now are serving bless them, Lord. I pray you bless every person who serves. Lord, I pray you bless them by making their time more fruitful. I pray you bless them by helping them to see fruit from their serving. Lord, I pray that you bless them by providing the resources they need to serve. Lord, I pray that you bless their relationships on their serve teams. Lord, I pray that as we serve as the body of Christ, Lord, I pray that we would really link arms and that we would just absolutely flat out love serving together. Lord, I praise you. I praise you, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And with your head still bowed, I just never want to close a service without giving you an invitation to put your faith in Jesus Christ. I don't know where you are spiritually, uh, and um, I, I just want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus. How do you do that? Turn away from your sin. All those things that separate you from God. Turn your life over to Jesus and let him lead you. If today is your day and you want to put your faith in Jesus, would you just raise your hand right where you are, whether you're in the room or online right now? And that is just a signal to me. Pastor, pray for me. I am making a decision right now to put my faith in Jesus. If that's you, raise your hand. On, online, I can't see you back, but God can see you right where you are. So I'd love to just coach you in a prayer today if you're putting your faith in Jesus. Would you all just pray this to Jesus? Uh, pray it out loud after me. Jesus, I invite you into my life. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. So please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you and let you lead starting now. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you just prayed that prayer today, we just say, we applaud you. We say, welcome to the family of God. And 
it would really help me if you would just fill out a connect card online or in the room fill out a connect card and mark the box that says i put my faith in jesus today so that we can encourage you amen amen thanks pastor garen what an awesome message i love how you said um when you serve jesus takes it personally and that's like it's so meaningful but it also sounds like a steven seagal quote like when you serve jesus takes it personally you know it's like <laughs> anyway uh so <laughs> how do i recover from this <laughs> Well, anyway, so if you filled out a connect, <laughs> connect card, would you just put it in that box in the back, um, in the offering box, and those the ushers will collect it when they're done with the service. And um, also, we would just love your help um, setting up for um, groups tonight. So if you want to linger back here, I'm not sure who's who's managing that. Um, yeah, meet with the meet with the pastor, meet with someone. We'll figure it all out together. Also, if today was your day, or if you're a newer believer um, and you just want to hear your, about your next steps in following Jesus, please see me at the Following Jesus booth out in the lobby. We've got a free book for you, a free online course you can take, and just kind of your next steps in following Jesus. All right, we love you guys. We will see you again next week for Donut Sunday. Bring a friend. God bless.